you have claimed everything you have opened your mouth to tell the lord what you have not reached him but has been provided for you heaven will pour everything upon your life in jesus name and you'll find that this coming year is the beginning of a new dawn in your life everything you lost in the past you are going to recover in the new year greater joy greater fulfillment greater happiness complete healing total health miracle in every direction you turn to the right miracle turn to the left miracle you go to work miracle you come to church miracle you are resting at home miracle father in jesus name you are the god of all flesh and the god of all power and the god of all authority lord i pray you look at everyone every child every student every youth every christian every believer every brother every sister every papa every mama everyone here oh lord i pray mercy for everyone abundant love for everyone your sufficiency for everyone and i pray that all those deep desires of their hearts which they have expressed or they have not been able to express lord i pray i pray oh lord you will give unto them in jesus name let them know they are serving a god of all possibilities let everyone know we're serving a god of all power a god of love and a god of all provision and i pray that you abundantly bless everyone in jesus name put testimony in every mouth confirm your miracle upon every life and let the joy of the lord be the strength of your people but thank you because we know you have answered tonight as we come and look at the message lord i pray every good thing in the message will be the possession of everyone thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the prosperous people of god said god has blessed you already you can sit down tonight as we come to look at the word of god we're coming to look at pentecost from a new direction pentecost from a new perspective pentecost from the side of heaven and from the side of the provision of the lord himself pentecost is talking about the outpouring of the spirit of god the baptism in the holy ghost the immersion in the river of fire that the lord almighty himself as promised is giving us some preview in the old testament pentecost baptism in the holy ghost outpouring of the holy ghost that comes upon the church upon the people of god is a peculiarly new testament experience but we have the preview in the old testament let me show you what i mean i'm looking at numbers chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 29 numbers 11 verse 29 and moses said unto him and thou for my sake would god that all the lord's people were prophets and that the spirit the lord will put his spirit upon them everybody knows if you're reading the bible that moses was filled with the spirit of god his word was a word of power from the time god put the word in his mouth and he went to egypt and he appeared before pharaoh the power of God never failed him 
all through the wilderness journey miracle upon miracle upon miracle because the spirit of the lord was upon him and here moses said how i desire how i wish that the spirit of god will be upon all the people of god when he said all the people of god he wasn't only thinking about preachers he wasn't only thinking about christian workers he was thinking about and talking about literally everybody and as you go through the old testament you'll find that the people in the old testament those who had this preview of the feeling in dwelling outpouring of the holy spirit we are talking about that holy ghost came upon them and made them successful in whatever the lord put in their hand to do look at exodus chapter 31 exodus chapter 31 from verse 1 and the lord spake unto moses saying see i have called by name bazaliel the son of Uri, the son of all of the tribe of judah notice verse 3 and i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship you see he wasn't a preacher but he was to work in material things and god said and put him my spirit upon him the spirit of wisdom you come to first samuel chapter 16 and you find part of this preview how the spirit of god came upon david first samuel chapter 16 reading from verse 13 then samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the lord came upon david from that day forward and from this day forward the spirit of the lord will come upon you he yeah. had just been anointed king and he wasn't in the position yet look at verse 23 and it came to pass when the evil spirit from god was upon saul that david took and harp and played with his hand so saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him a preview of what the spirit of god does when he comes in our lives these were old testament characters who didn't even attain unto the measure of the immersion and the infilling and the outpouring and the baptism in the holy ghost and yet see what the holy ghost did through them by the anointing outpouring indwelling of the spirit second kings chapter 2 in second kings chapter 2 verse 9 and it came to pass when they were gone over that elijah said unto elisha ask what i shall do for thee before i be taken away from thee and elisha said i pray thee let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me a preview of what was yet to happen the spirit of god came in a double measure upon elisha and you see the great miracles that were done in his ministry isaiah chapter 44 in isaiah chapter 44 reading from verse 3 isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 and i will pour water upon him that is thirsty the idea of pouring here is to totally pour upon the whole person until you're drenched in the water and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit 
upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring and that Isaiah himself that said that you know about his life and about his prophecy and you know the manifestation of the Spirit of God upon his life Isaiah chapter 8 chapter 8 verse 18 behold I and the children whom the Lord has given me for, for signs and wonders in Israel for signs and wonders in Israel if that happened to the Old Testament characters who had the preview of the baptism the immersion the outpouring of the Spirit of God that was to come at Pentecost if the preview is so wonderful I about the real scene that was still coming Isaiah chapter 59 Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun look at this when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him those Old Testament characters had a lot of battles they fought a lot of crossroads they came to a lot of challenges they faced but the assurance they had even before the New Testament era is that when that enemy will come and will come in like a flood the Spirit of God will lift up his standard against the enemy and the enemy will be beating back like your enemy all of them they'll be beating back in Jesus name you see Kel, you see Kel, as, as we're going on you see the progression the progression in the sense that is becoming more definitive is becoming more decisive as to various steps and the definite steps that the Lord will take as he's going to pour out the spirit upon his people we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel 36 reading from verse 25 then will I sprinkle water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you that talks about salvation cleansing from idols from filthiness from iniquity from transgression from uncleanness look at verse 26 a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh that talks about sanctification you see it's becoming more definite as to what steps the Lord will take as to what experiences he will give he'll give salvation conversion regeneration freedom from sin freedom from idols cleansing from filthiness not only that number two he will sanctify he'll take away the stony heart he'll give a heart of flesh look at number three in verse 27 and i will put my spirit within you i will put my spirit within you it'll becoming clearer and clearer and also come to Mark, Micah, Micah chapter 3. Micah is now saying, it's got the experience. He's saying, even though he has not gone into New Testament era, New Testament dispensation, Micah said, I got it, I got it. Isaiah spoke about it, I got it. Ezekiel spoke about it, I got it. Look at Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So you will see as you look at the Old Testament, you find that 
Moses desired it. And he said, Would God that all of God's people were prophets, and the Spirit of God will be upon them. Then you find scattered examples of the people that received a measure of the power. And now Joel looks forward to the future. And he looks forward to what is actually going to happen. And it's Joel that painted the full picture as to what will happen, which now occurred at the time of the children of God that followed after the Lord Jesus Christ. And the old Pentecost came. And thank God, your own Pentecost has come. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That was the desire, the pronouncement, and everything that Moses said. And now God said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. That's looking forward to Pentecost. And that's what, why we're here today to talk about Pentecost and to talk about the purpose of Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them, cloving tongues like as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were all filled how many of them were filled? And they were all filled. If you were there that day, what would have happened to you? You would be filled. And Jesus Christ, the same, tell me, yesterday, and today, and forever. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See the explanation that the Apostle Peter gave concerning that Pentecost that came on them. Verse 16, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Peter the apostle was explaining the experience that those apostles and the disciples had. But now he went beyond that day and he, he assured the people there was still going to be a repetition. It's still going to continue. Where did he say that? Look at it in verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that goes beyond the 120 that goes beyond the people that just received 
because he said you they were not even saved at that time that they were just going to be saved because they said repent and after repentance they would also experience in the order in which ezekiel had prophesied and then it says he shall receive the gift of the holy ghost look at verse 39 for the promises unto you those of them that were present and to your children those who are not there and to all that are far off those who are gentiles are far off those who are here today even as many as the lord our god shall call and so you see from the time of moses a desire looking forward that that time will come and the prophets were prophesying about it and joel made it very clear the time was coming the fullness of pentecost pentecostal power fulfilled in every life and then he says far off afar off as many as the lord our god shall call tonight we're looking at the purpose of that pentecost the purpose of pentecost the three things we're looking at number one the promise of personal pentecost the promise of personal pentecost the receiving of the spirit of god was personal for moses personal for the 70 elders one by one that the lord took the spirit of moses and gave to them personal for joshua personal for david personal for jeremiah personal for isaiah personal for ezekiel personal for micah personal for you i said personal for you the promise of personal pentecost number two the purpose of the promised pentecost pentecost was promised the outpouring of the holy ghost immersion in the holy ghost the baptism in the holy ghost was promised and then it has a purpose the purpose of the promised pentecost number three the power from our possessed pentecost when you possess that pentecost when it becomes a personal heritage in your life and you possess what he has promised there is power and thank god your weakness will vanish away because power will come upon your life in jesus name number one tell me number one personal i said tell me number one personal the promise of your personal pentecost look at the promise of god the promise of christ and you remember anything and any time christ promised anything he never forgets actually he promised here on earth and then he went to heaven making intercession for you and for me and for us so that this personal pentecost will be yours luke chapter 24 verse 49 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you personal peter did not look at that as a common thing general thing for the assembly for the congregation for me john did not look at it as everybody's business nobody's business for me it says behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endeared with power from on high thank god it will happen acts chapter one in acts chapter one reading from verse four and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise wait for the promise of the father which says he ye have heard of me i've given you the promise you have heard each of me wait for it 
look up here for a moment if somebody you trust a close friend is never lied to you and it's always kind it's always thinking of your good it's always thinking of what you need before you even realize you need that thing and then it says wait here for me i'm going to bring this for you it's a necessary important tool in your life in the work you're doing so you will succeed you'll trust him as a friend you don't have any reason to doubt him and look at jesus christ savior master lord friend and he says i'm going to bring the promise of the father to you wait for the promise of the father which says he ye have heard of me for john truly really baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence thank god it will happen john chapter 14 in john chapter 14 it tells us in verse 16 see talking about the promise john chapter 14 verse 16 and i will pray the father you remember the father always heard him the father never says no to the only begotten son and the only begotten son jesus was assuring them and assuring us and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that ye may abide with you for how long forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him look at this but she know him how because they were born of the spirit except a man be born of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god ye know him because you are born of the spirit for he dwelleth with you how because they have been born again and they were following him and he had given them grace the spirit of grace was upon them he dwelleth with you but now the promise is he shall be in you there are people that say that everything comes such one moment you're saved that's all you have the spirit you're already baptized in the spirit jesus said the world cannot receive him you will receive him because you know him you are saved he dwelleth with you you are saved he shall be in you it was still a future scene and thank god he will be in you i said he will be in you john chapter 15 the promise of personal pentecost john 15 verse 26 but when the comforter is come he is coming whom i will send you see the promise there whom i will send unto you from the father have you noticed that something in the old testament and as well as in the new anytime god sent an angel to come the angel always came there wasn't any delay and here jesus christ our lord and savior see the promise is giving us it says this comforter this holy spirit this holy ghost i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father and he shall testify of me and he shall testify of me chapter 16 of john john chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart look at this i will send him unto you 
you see that the way Jesus spoke to the disciples he spoke with assurance there's no shadow of doubt in their minds that as Jesus went then he'll talk to the father and when he gets to heaven he'll send the Holy Ghost unto them they saw him go up into heaven and the angels came and said ye men of Galilee are you standing here gazing up into heaven Jesus that is going to heaven that same Jesus will come again in the future to take you unto himself how are they sure that he actually got to heaven Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 verse 32 and verse 33 this Jesus has got raised up whereof we are all witnesses therefore look at this being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which he now see and hear he went to heaven and as he went to heaven he fulfilled his promise and he sent the Holy Ghost unto them he's still in heaven I said he's still in heaven and he has promised you the Holy Ghost as he fulfilled for them the promise is going to fulfill that promise in your life today in Jesus name Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised for he is faithful that promised and the faithfulness of Christ is still affirmed today and is going to show that faithfulness because tonight you are going to have a personal Pentecost I say you are going to have a personal Pentecost but you know you must believe the promise you must not say can that be for me is it not too good to be true look at Romans chapter 4 those, those who receive the promises of God the fulfillment they know he's faithful they know he's able they know he's willing and they know he's going to do what he has said he will do and this is the attitude they have as they come to the Lord Romans chapter 4 verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief tonight as you come to the Lord there should be no shadow of that in your heart you're not going to stagger at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God being fully persuaded that's the faith with which you grab and hold and have and possess the promise of God being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform a performance in your life tonight I said a performance in your life tonight and you'll possess in Jesus name but the question is was the purpose was the purpose what do we have the Holy Spirit why has Christ promised the Holy Spirit unto us what are we to do what the baptism the infilling the indwelling the outpouring of the Holy Spirit point number two the purpose of the promised Pentecost the purpose of the promised Pentecost if you have something and you don't know the reason why you have that thing that's going to be underutilized in your life you'll not understand you'll not know what you have that thing that is given to you you might be using it for just one thing when you could have used it for 101 things that's the reason why we need to know the purpose why we have this promised Pentecost I'm looking at John chapter 7 verse 37 the purpose in the last day 
that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink it's telling us the purpose of the holy ghost your thirsty is to quench your thirst your spiritually thirsty you have looked at moses you have seen elijah you have seen david you have seen isaiah you have seen ezekiel you have seen daniel and you have seen the lives of the apostles and that created a desire a passion in you if i could be like this if i could be like that if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink and have that desire satisfied he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water what's the purpose of the holy ghost you know there are times you you meet people they are dry they're discouraged they're weary and you cannot help them and you are saying if i can just have a word that will refresh his life if i can have a word that will quicken him energize him refresh him it will be wonderful but i'm sorry i could not help him i'm a christian i'm a believer and i see people who are discouraged i can do nothing and they're looking up to me so that a refreshing will come in their lives it says when you have the holy ghost baptism rivers of living water will flow out from you unto others and you yourself you'll not be feeling dry every time weary every time forgetful every time because a refreshing will be in your life verse 39 but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe in him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified is to demonstrate the glory of christ in your life when you have the holy ghost the proof that Christ is glorified will be evident in your life. If you speak, he'll be glorified. If you witness, he'll be glorified. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. We're looking at John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. You know, there are times you face a challenge in your life, and you just feel, yes, I know, I can read the Bible, I know that Jesus is inside me here, great I see that is in you, the need that is in the world, I don't feel it. I don't say it. I don't seem to possess it. I know it's in the Bible. It brings the reality of the presence, of the power, of the Spirit of God in you when this purpose is fulfilled. Look at verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless orphans. I will come to you. That's it. When the Holy Ghost comes, the partnership the fellowship is so real that you know that you are not an orphan verse 26 the purpose of the promised pentecost in verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things he shall teach you all things you know sometimes after you've been a christian for some time and uh, people are expecting you already know the bible from cover to cover 
and then if you read any part of the bible you should understand that's what people see but sometimes we open the bible we, we don't really understand the depths of the meaning there and it says when that comforter is come he will teach you all things look at what follows and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you uh, when you were a student you remember sometimes you go to the exam hall and the test is given the examination is given and you've read your books and you have you know you studied everything very well but just at the time you have to put that thing down on paper you have forgotten you cannot remember and then you try to search your mind your brain you still cannot remember and then you answered other parts you could answer although you still had a pass mark but if you had remembered everything you studied you'll have come out in flying colors what i'm saying is as you look at life there are challenges that come in life you come to a crossroad you don't know what to do and you come to challenge your life you don't want you know what to do and yet you have read the word of god you have heard the word of christ that when this happens this is a solution the faith you have learned about and the word of god you have learned that you put into practice at that time it just escaped you you cannot remember the presence of the holy ghost it will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you that's the purpose when you possess that Pentecost chapter 15 of John verse 26 but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me he shall testify of me jesus is the son of god give me a good amen yeah. jesus is god give me a good amen yeah. thomas said my lord and my god there are times you meet people you are discussing with them and they don't understand they're not pretending they don't understand who jesus is the personality of jesus the power of jesus the infinite attributes eternal attributes of christ and you have you've read about it before you've heard that the bible study before and the fellow is saying i'm sincere tell me prove it to me show it to me and you don't know what to say when you're filled with the holy ghost jesus said when that holy ghost comes he shall testify of me it seemed that will bring that watch in your heart and then you talk to the people you are talking to they say you know i never saw it like that before now i understand now i see look at verse 27 and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning we're coming to chapter 16 of john john chapter 16 verse 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but she cannot bear them now the lord jesus was talking to his own disciples he's been with them for more than three years now almost three and a half years and he said you have learned a lot of things you know a lot of things but you know what there's still many things i've not said unto you because you cannot understand you cannot bear them now then look at verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth he will guide you into all truth you see those disciples following the lord jesus christ when matthew started following the lord he didn't know he writes the gospel according to saint matthew and when john started following the lord he didn't know he would write the gospel according to saint john and was just following 
they were not taking notes they're not like us like you come to the church and you're taking notes they're not taking notes and when jesus was preaching it was by the mountainside they didn't even know he was going to give a long sermon on the mount and then they sat down there they were listening to him listening to him and eventually jesus christ went to heaven and as jesus went to heaven the challenge came now matthew was all right the gospel according to saint matthew but he had received the holy ghost and from chapter one all through all those miracles all those utterances all the sermon of the month everything he recollected everything by the spirit of god and john john didn't him write immediately he wrote about 96 a.d about that about 60 years after jesus had gone to heaven and when the challenge came to write the gospel according to saint john the holy ghost brought everything back everything back and look at all that was written in luke and in mark the holy ghost brought everything back to them that's what the lord is saying he's saying it's not just that you know i spoke in tongues i spoke in tongues that's good that's wonderful that's the initial evidence it says in verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he'll be hearing from heaven telling you on earth that shall you speak and he will show you things to come verse 14 he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you shall show it unto you luke chapter 1 the purpose of the promised pentecost i pray that the purpose will fulfill in your heart are you still waiting for the promise i said are you still waiting for the promise or are you tired i said are you tired no you cannot be tired i know you you're going to receive the promise of the father in jesus name Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 1, verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. You want to win comforts and you want to turn people away from their sin and you want to turn them to the Savior. How's that going to happen? By the promised Pentecost in your life. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord if you are going to prepare people ready for the rapture for the coming of the Lord you cannot do it in the energy of the flesh you cannot do it by yourself you cannot do it by the training you have from men you stuff your head what well, you know i read this in the commentary i read this in this place i read that in that book that's not enough you must have the promised pentacles if you're going to be qualified to prepare people for the coming of the lord we're looking at luke chapter 12. luke chapter 12 reading from verse 11. luke chapter 12 reading from verse 11 and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers taking no thought how or what thing he shall answer or what he shall say for the holy ghost shall teach you in that same hour what he ought to say this is the reason why because when they were following the lord jesus christ you can imagine here was jesus and those pharisees were bombarding him with questions and peter must have been thinking huh, when christ has gone because he says he's going and these people come to ask us all these dribbling embarrassing questions are we going to answer should we pay tribute to caesar or not if he said they wanted yes or no pay tribute to caesar if he said yes they said uh-huh so you want us to be slaves to the roman government if he said no the roman soldiers were there you're teaching them against the king against caesar are we going to answer the questions when it comes to our turn should we pay tribute to caesar 
show me a coin there whose image is that a superscription they said caesar's he said give unto caesar the thing that belongs to caesar and unto god your heart that belongs to god we caught the woman red-handed in sin and moses said stone her what do you say peter are you going to answer that john are you going to answer that he was writing on the ground and then he lifted up his head and he said he that has no sin let him cast the first stone and they all went away one by one when it comes to our turn and they ask us questions and we cannot go and open malachi or open isaiah or open jeremiah to find the answer because pay tribute to caesar or not the answer is not in the psalms the answer is not in the proverbs the answer came from heaven into his heart he gave it to them should we stone this woman or not the answer is not in leviticus the answer came from heaven and jesus said after he had gone away and then you have embarrassing questions like that verse 12 for the holy ghost shall teach you the holy ghost will teach you in the same hour what she ought to say that's the reason we need the power we need the baptism be immersion in the holy ghost look at this acts chapter 4 acts chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 7 in acts of the apostle chapter 4 verse 7 and when they had set them in the midst they asked by what power and by what name have you done this this is situational that came after they had got the holy ghost after they had, after they had been baptized in the holy ghost by what power have you done this by what name have you done this then peter filled with the holy ghost that's exactly what jesus had promised that's what the lord had promised you you receive the holy ghost then Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's no fear in him, no timidity in him, but the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you whole this is the stone which this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which has become the hedge of the corner look at verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved look at what they noticed after he gave that answer and you know he gave that answer not from any note he had taken the holy ghost came upon him and the holy ghost made him to say what he said verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men he marveled and he took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They answer questions just like Jesus. They will not be intimidated just like Jesus. They will not be beaten back just like Jesus. They will not be confused just like Jesus. And he took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And then your words will carry power i said your words will carry power Amen. chapter 10 of acts acts chapter 10 verse 44 while peter yet speak these words the holy ghost fell on them that heard the word peter was still talking it was not even getting to preaching on the baptism in the Holy Ghost yet. The Holy Ghost came upon them. You know, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you are talking to people, while you are talking, they can be healed. You didn't hear that? 
I said, while you're speaking, they can be healed. While you're speaking, they can be convicted of their manner of life. While, there's, while you're speaking, light will come to them. And then they will know this is what to do. And the power of the Holy Ghost can operate in their lives on the day of the circumcision, which believes what was astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that of the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues peter did not teach them how to speak in tongues peter did not even talk about speaking in tongues and peter did not say this is how we speak in tongues say this say this say it faster say it faster and shout hallelujah say it seven times don't speak your language it didn't you kind of try to motivate them to speak in tongues when the holy ghost comes the holy ghost knows how to take over your life he'll take over your heart Take over your tongue. Take over all your speech, uh, all your speech and tools that are there. And what you need to speak, he'll speak through you in Jesus' name. It says, for they had them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water? They are not even be baptized in water. Can anybody forbid water that this should not be baptized? Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we acts chapter 13 acts chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 15 in acts chapter 13 verse 15 but the jews stand up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against paul and barnabas and expelled them out of their coast and he shook up the dust of their feet against them and came to Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy persecution but joy misunderstanding but joy and the disciples were filled with joy <coughs> and with the Holy Ghost joy will come whatever situation or whatever you are going through the joy of the lord will be your strength all the time through in jesus name first corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. It says, when the Holy Ghost comes, we'll not be ignorant anymore of our inheritance, of the things that are provided for us, of the things that are freely given unto us. The Holy Ghost will point our attention to it. This is yours, and you pick it up. That's yours, and then you take it that's yours and you believe for it because it tells you the price has been paid and the spirit of god freely tells us shows us reveals to us the things that are ours verse 13 which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy ghost teaches that he is will teach you directly comparing spiritual things with spiritual and of course you know there are gifts of the spirit that he also comes with because he tells us in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man every man thank god you are here I said, thank God, this one belongs to you too. To every man to profit with her. You make spiritual profit and progress in Jesus' name. But one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. 
to another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues but all these workers that one and self same spirit dividing to how many people dividing to tell me out aloud if you are part of this dividing to every man severally as he will hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 therefore we need to give the honest more honest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep that is the promise the lord has given us those who are not saved the promise of salvation hold on to that get saved those who are to be sanctified hold on to that get sanctified and those who are to be filled baptized in the holy ghost come it's yours we need to give them more honesty to the things we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep look at verse 4 god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will thank god he will do it thank god he'll fulfill the promise in your life number one the promise of personal pentecost number two the purpose of the promised pentecost number three the power somebody shout power I mean, you know, you don't shout power in a weak manner. I say shout power. Thank God he'll drive every weakness out of your life in Jesus' name. When the Holy Ghost comes in baptismal measure, he comes with power. And thank God when he comes upon the man, upon the woman, upon the child, the boy, girl, upon the young, upon the old, he comes with power because it's the same with everyone look at acts chapter one the power from our possessed pentecost acts chapter one verse eight but you shall receive power but i will receive power but i will receive power but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Thank God it will happen to you. Acts chapter 4. The Spirit and the power. The power and the Spirit. Acts chapter 4. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking when they were assembled together, and they were all filled. How? Filled, tell me, with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God. How did they speak the word of God? Looking down. I said, How did they speak the word of God? afraid of the people they were talking to how did they speak that word of god with boldness boldness is power courage is power thank god that's what you have today Verse is three and with great power give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them how many of them all great power upon you there great grace upon you there because the Holy Ghost is coming and it's going to come in great mighty power look at first Thessalonians chapter 1 first Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in watch only but in power and in the holy ghost that's how the word comes in power and in the holy ghost once you are filled with the holy ghost baptized with the holy ghost when you speak that word it will come with the power of the holy ghost in jesus name in much assurance as she you know what manner of men were, were among you for your sake 
and you became followers of us and of the Lord a change will happen in the people you are speaking to having received the word in much affliction with the joy with joy of the Holy Ghost if you are a naturally somber uh, morose and such personality when the Holy Ghost comes it will change your personality joy will be flowing from your heart every time in jesus name you will not be going around again saying look what i'm going through see what i'm going through the pressure is too much i don't know whether i can survive till tomorrow you'll survive till next year you'll survive beyond next year the joy of the lord will be your strength in jesus name so that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, every place, every place you go, you are going to leave something behind. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you. And now ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven who be raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. You're not be, you know, feeling afraid every time. I don't know whether judgment is still going to come. Wrath is going to come. It's going to come. You've passed beyond that because the Holy Ghost is alive in your heart. And I pray that this power of the Holy Ghost tonight, tonight, tonight will be yours in Jesus' name. Everyone that has will receive. I said everyone that has received it. And that's it you are going to receive in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans. We're looking at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And thank God tonight. Whether you are overseer or you are worker, you are leader, you are a member, or you have just received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, as Sanctifier, thank God the power is yours tonight. The power is mine tonight. I said the power is mine tonight. I said the power is mine tonight. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. We're looking at verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look among you look ye out among you among you seven men of honest report, saved and sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may, we may appoint over this business. Look at verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and he chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and the rest of them. And then look at verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power. And Stephen, full of faith and power. And what's your name? I said, what's your name? I said, what's your name? I see you there. I see you here with the eyes of faith. Full of faith, full of power. The great wonders and miracles among the people. Look at verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They were not able to resist. All those who have been, you know, you say something, and they'll say, no, I don't accept. No, I don't believe. From tonight, nobody will say no to you. I said nobody will say no to you. Your time of fulfillment has come. Say my time of fulfillment has come. You will not be disappointed. I said you will not be disappointed. You bring your vessel and it will fill you to overflowing tonight in Jesus name. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 9. Luke chapter 11 verse 9. And I say unto you. And I say unto you. Who is the Lord talking to now? Forget everyone and just, just yourself. This yourself. This yourself. And I say unto you. Ask and it shall be given you. 
I have assurance tonight this promise, this power, this unction, this outpouring is for you tonight in Jesus' name. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10, that this is yours. Say this is mine. For everyone, everyone, for everyone, everyone, your name is here. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. The door of outpouring is open for you today. And the door of indwelling is open for you today. Look at verse 11. If a son ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he ask an egg will he for an egg uh, offer him a scorpion when you ask for the holy ghost are you going to get evil spirit no impossible the holy ghost is coming upon you tonight he'll fill you inside your heart inside your soul soul inside your mind and eternally and then there'll be outpouring in jesus name remember remember you are not asking for speaking in tongues there are people that make a mistake it's like you know you go to you go to the shop you want to buy a pair of shoes and as you want to buy the pair of shoes instead of looking for the pairs of shoes you're looking for the tongue of the shoe that's not what you're looking for just get the shoe and everything will come with the shoe i said everything will come with the shoe I want to buy, I want to buy a pair of shoes. Can I see the lace? That's not what you're looking for. Can I see the tongue? That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to come. And when he comes, he comes with knowledge. He comes with light. He comes with enlightenment. He comes with inspiration. He comes with fire. He comes with power. He comes with seal. He comes with understanding. He comes with everything. You're going to have everything in Jesus' name. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that seeketh findeth. He that knocketh, to him it shall be open. Thank God the door is open for you tonight. Look at, look at, look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. If ye then, natural people, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? How much more? How much more? If you were, if you were thirsty and you ask me for a cup of water, a glass of water, I'll readily give you. If I, a natural man, will give you that glass of water, how much more shall your heavenly Father? It's your Father. I said it's your Father. I said it's your Father. He loves you and he wants to be a blessing to you. How much more shall your Father, Heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to them that, to them that, to them that, anyone, are you going to ask tonight? Who is going to ask? Who is going to ask? Will he give it to you? I said, will he give the Holy Ghost to you? Will he give you power tonight? Will you give, give you that inspiration tonight? Will he bring the light to you tonight? Easy. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Rise up, ask and receive. Ask and receive. This is yours. It's your privilege. It's your promise. It's what he has said. He will give. How much more? How much more? How much more? It's a promise. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You're fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. What I ask is given to me. I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone, everyone, everyone that has can receive it. No exception. No exception. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you now. The, the power is coming upon you now. The enlightenment is coming upon you now. The inspiration is coming upon you now. Open door coming upon you now that assurance coming upon you now 
everyone 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 that has us to receive us everyone my brother that's you there my sister that's you there my boy my girl that's you there everyone 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 that has to receive us everyone that has to receive us would god that god will pour his spirit upon all flesh upon all flesh upon the men upon the women upon the old upon the young upon the ladies upon the handmaidens everyone 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 that has and receive it he comes in fresh he comes in like water he refreshes your life you feel the coolness right there you feel the refreshing right there you feel the assurance right there you feel the whisper of the holy spirit right there i have come i have come i have come i have entered i have entered receive him receive him it's your guest receive him it's your comforter receive him it's your helper receive him it's your inspirer receive him it's your teacher receive him is the one that has come to reveal the truth unto you receive him i receive your spirit holy ghost i receive you Holy Ghost, I receive you. Welcome. 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 Throw wide open your door. Throw wide open the door of your heart. No discrimination. He comes to everyone. Everyone that has us. Everyone that has us. That's why the reflection is there. That's why the coolness is there. That's why the calmness is there. That's why the peace is there. It comes with calmness, with coolness, with peace. It comes with refreshing like water. It comes with zeal and heat like fire. It comes with assurance and boldness. It comes with courage. It comes with passion. It comes with a desire to run for God. It comes with inspiration, understanding of the Bible. It comes with enlightenment. And it comes with a new language, a new utterance, a new power, a new perception. He has come. He has come. You believe, you receive. You believe, you receive. You believe, you receive. You believe you receive. Ask, it shall be given. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone, 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 everyone that has us receive us. Receive him. Jesus has gone to heaven. He has spoken to the Father. The Father who saved you. The Father who sanctified you for the blood of Jesus has answered the request of Jesus on your behalf. He has poured out the Holy Spirit, which we now see and hear. Praise Him, thank Him, welcome Him. He has come. He has come. He has come. Welcome him. Welcome him. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Thank you, Lord. I receive. And then all the manifestation of his presence. You will feel. You will see. You will sense. You will hear will abide with you from tonight will abide with you forever in jesus name we pray raise up that hand father in jesus name we thank you for the revelation of emmanuel and from now on your power your presence will abide with everyone in jesus name every negative thing of the past in any of your children wipe them away in jesus name that loneliness 
that sadness that sorrow that sickness that poverty that darkness that moving objects whatever it is with all the mountains i pray come out in jesus name blessings from on high benefits from on high miracles from on high signs and wonders from on high joy from on high power from on high bring out your people in jesus name be the god in their lives god in their families god in their businesses god in their profession god in their utterances god in their evangelism god in their ministry god in the work of god in their hand and i pray lord they will not fail in jesus name emmanuel god with us your partnership will be with your people every time when they're alone your partnership there your presence there your promises yes and amen in their lives fulfill it in jesus name with us with us with us and with everyone lord i pray your presence will go with everyone you be the shield before them you'll be the umbrella before, uh, over them you'll be the power the solid rock under them you'll be the guide before them and you'll be the watchman behind them right left front back you will surround them they'll be under the wings and the shadow of the almighty all through their lives in jesus name a thousand is falling by one side ten thousand on the other side it will not come near them you'll be a wall of fire around everyone in jesus name and the glory of the lord the glory of the lord will abide inside you and anywhere you go as you go in the name of the lord according to the will of god the lord in his power will be with you every miracle you need emmanuel will supply all the healing you need, Emmanuel has supplied. Deliverance dominion you need, Emmanuel has supplied. Every need of your life, Emmanuel has supplied. You'll be a happy Christian, a joyful Christian, a conquering Christian, a victorious Christian, a successful Christian, a confident Christian, an overcoming Christian to be higher greater than your enemies higher greater than your problem higher greater than your mountain go on now from strength to strength from power to power from grace to grace from glory to glory and the lord preserve you until you get to heaven a place for you in heaven and you'll not miss your place in heaven you'll not miss your reward in heaven you'll not miss the presence of god until you cross over the new year is coming emmanuel will go with you to the new year all your expectations will be fulfilled all through this year to the next year in jesus name abundance and the better life and the prosperous life over your life as you move over and you move on in the Lord, sufficiency, abundance, all the way through. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.